In this video, we're going to learn about the different parts of a circuit. Now, the circuit that you see here is a little bit more complicated than the circuits we'll be learning about and drawing in our unit on electricity. But this would be an example of a plan that you might see um, to show the wiring of an electronic device. So this is an example of a simple circuit, and there are a few points here. So these are the conducting wires. So just a straight line represents a the wire in the circuit. This here is a switch, and this switch is open because it's has a break in the in the circuit. So electricity is not flowing through the circuit right now. Over here is a light bulb. So this is the symbol for a light bulb. And over here is a battery. So this battery actually has three cells in it because there's every short and long line represents one cell. So this is a battery with three cells. So right now we're going to go over some of the most commonly used circuit symbols. So the first one here was in that simple circuit I showed you. So this is an open switch. So again, you can see there's a little line to represent the conducting wire, a sticking up line, and then another line here. So this means that electricity can't flow through the circuit because there's a break in the circuit. Over here, this is a resistor. Resistors are represented by jaggedy lines. And resistors are put into circuits to slow down the flow of electrons so that they don't go too quickly through the circuit and overheat the circuit and cause uh, problems. This here is a light bulb, so we represent that with like a swirling line and a circle around it. This here is a voltmeter. We'll learn about those a little bit later in this lesson. So voltmeters measure the voltage drop or the force of electrons moving through a circuit. And ammeters, which is a circle with an A, they measure the, the speed of electrons going through a circuit. And we'll learn more about these two things when we start building our circuits and start learning about something known as Ohm's Law. Over here, we have a closed switch. So you can see it looks like this one up here, except now that, that lever is down. So now there is a complete circuit and electrons can flow through the circuit because the switch is closed. Over here is a fuse. Fuses are placed into circuits to, to break if this electron flow is going too quickly and the circuit starts to overheat. That could cause a fire and that would be a problem. So a fuse will be designed is designed into a circuit to, to melt or break so that the circuit stops and you don't overheat. Um, older houses will have fuses, fuse boxes in their house, and you would actually have to go and change the fuse if you blew a fuse, which is a little bit of a hassle. So in more modern homes, probably most of your homes, you will find circuit breakers and not fuse boxes. So instead, the circuit breaker just trips if you overheat, and then you have to go and re retrip the, the circuit and everything will be fine again. This here is a cell. Remember a cell is one single bundle of energy. So if this one here, we represent it with a long line followed by a short line, and that would be one cell. Over here is a battery that has made up of two cells. So you have a long line and a short line and a long line and a short line. So we have two cells in this one. Now you would not draw the two long lines and then the two short lines side by side like separately because that would not be the right, right representation. So you have to alternate the longs and the shorts. And the final thing here is a motor. A motor is a circle with an M in the middle. And a motor is anything that causes like rotational energy. So a fan would have a motor. Um, your blender would have a motor because it's turning the blades. Your food processor would have a motor and so on. So right now we're going to practice drawing some simple circuits using the, the instructions that were given. So in this example, we're told to draw a circuit with a battery with two cells, a light, and an open switch. So I'll start over here with our battery. So we have a long and a short, another long and a short. So there's our battery with two cells. And then I'm going to draw some conducting wire, and I'm going to turn the corner, I'm going to draw a light. And I'm just going to put that there. And then I'm going to draw an open switch over here, like so. And then I'm going to connect back to the cells. And there you go. You have a circuit with a battery with two cells, a light, and an open switch. So because this switch is open, the electricity is not going to flow through the circuit. 
Our next example, we're asked to build a battery or draw a circle with a battery with three cells, two lights, a closed switch, and a motor. So we have a few things to add to this one. So I'm going to draw our battery up here. So long and short, another long, another short, another long, and another short. So there's our battery with three cells. I'm going to put two lights. So I'm going to go here. This time I'm going to make a curvy line. You don't have to have sharp edges or, or curved edges. It doesn't matter how you draw these. And then I'm going to put a closed switch here, like so. And then around the corner, I'm going to put our motor. I'll come back and finish the motor. There we go. And I'll finish the lights over here. So we have our battery with three cells, a closed switch down here, two lights, and a motor. In this example, we're asked to draw a single cell, three lights, a fuse, and an open switch. So I'm going to start with our single cell. So one line, one short. I'm going to put one light bulb here. And then I'm going to put our fuse kind of in the middle. And I'm going to put another light bulb. And then I'm going to put another light bulb. And then over here, we're going to draw our open switch. I'm going to close everything off. So we've got our fuse, we've got three light bulbs, one, two, three, an open switch, and a single cell, and our fuse. In this example, we're to draw a battery with two cells, so we'll start with that. So there's one, two. We need one light, so there's our light. We're to put a closed switch, like so, and then an ammeter. So I'm going to draw our ammeter right here. And then I'm going to close off our circuit like so and finish off our light bulb. So we have our battery with two cells, one light, a close switch, and an ammeter. Our next example, we're to draw a single cell. So one, two, two lights. So there's one. And I'm going to turn the corner and put the other one. There it is. A fuse like so and a motor. And there's our motor. So there is our circuit. Single cell, two lights, a fuse, and a motor. In this example, we don't have a switch. So the circuit would run continuously. So a voltmeter is an instrument that's used to measure the flow of electrons, or the force of electron flow, between two points in an electric circuit. And what it does is it measures the voltage drop across a load. So a load is anything that is slowing down the flow of electrons. So a light bulb, a motor, a resistor, what all the examples of a load. And to measure that voltage drop, you have to attach the voltmeter at two different points in the circuit. So you don't put it as part of the circuit. Instead, you put it over a load in the circuit. And I'll show you an example on our next slide. So here's an example of our circuit. So we have a closed switch, a light bulb, a fuse, a battery with three cells, and a resistor. And imagine we want to find out what the voltage drop across this light bulb is. So if we wanted to do that, we would add in our voltmeter like so. So we would put it across the light bulb. So um, before the light bulb and then after the light bulb, we'd incorporate the voltmeter across those two points. And that's how you measure the voltage drop across a load.